Okay, this is segment five here of the restoration of a boat anchor, a Heathkit SB110A. These were made in the late 60s, uh, 69, 70, 71. They started out in 69 with the SB110, and then they proceeded to improve it and made it into the SB110A. The 110A is the best model for operation. However, the SB110 is very scarce. They, don't, they only made a few of those. So the 110 is a scarce model. You can tell them apart because uh, tube V9 on the 110 is mounted on the chassis, whereas on the 110A, it's mounted on the circuit board. So here's our SB110A. I've got it back together. Now, uh, I didn't show the assembly uh, like I did all of the other segments that I did because uh, all of this assembly stuff is right in the Heathkit manual and you can get the manual right off of the internet so I've got it put back together per the Heathkit manual and the first time I turned it on now this power supply had not been run for I would say 20 years I took the bottom off the power supply to see if there was any leakage out of the capacitors uh, in the power supply I saw no leakage in fact it looks beautiful under there it just looks factory new underneath so I put a new cord on it uh, and uh, some new fuses. Somebody put 20 amp fuses in that uh, fused plug here. And uh, it's supposed to be 3 amp. I put 3 amp fuses in. And I have it on a Variac, a variable AC transformer. So the first thing I do when I start out a piece of old, old equipment that hasn't been run for a long time, so that I don't ruin the electrolytic capacitors, I set it off, start it off at 10 volts. I run it about 15 minutes on 10 volts. I've got the unit turned on now. I've got the SB110A turned on. I go to 10 volts and I'm going to show you this very slowly. I've already gone through this sequence of running at 15 minutes at each one of these voltages. I start at 10, I go to 20, let it set for another 15 minutes. I then double that, go to 40, I let it set for another 15 minutes. I then go to 60, let it set for another 15 minutes, and I work my way up slowly to 120 volts. Now we got it on 120, and everything's coming on here. I see the uh, S meter is uh, coming back down. We're getting some, some uh, sounds out of it there, and there's a problem. Hear that noise? That's something. That's in the receiver preamplifier stages. The uh, preamplifier is not aligned properly. So I'm going to have to realign that. Well that's in the manual. That's really neat about these. You've got that Heathkit manual and you can align things according to that Heathkit manual no problem. Those manuals I think are the best manuals ever written. And I don't think anybody does any better today writing manuals that are easy to follow. Lots of steps, lots of pictures, lots of good instructions. So uh, by all means, when you work on a heath kit, be sure you get the manual for it. Very important on the heath kit now with our uh, final assembly. Before you, uh, I'm going to turn it off here. Before you uh, do any further testing, be sure you come in and you tighten each and every one of the little screws on the circuit boards. Uh, get yourself a nice screwdriver that fits well. Tighten all of these screws on the circuit boards. These are the grounds for the circuit boards and this is very important. These things will work loose because the circuit boards are made of a plastic material, a Bakelite material, and they will compress. So you want to take each screw, make sure it's tight. These should have uh, lock washers on the bottom and so you should be able to just turn them on the top and tighten them up. However, you may reach one once in a while that uh, you can't tighten and you have to go underneath and hold it with some long nose pliers or something to get it tightened. So that's one step that you really need to do there. And uh, something else I want to point out is I have replaced all of these little capacitors. These are all the electrolytics that were on uh, the audio board and uh, there's one electrolytic that was over here on the uh, IF board right there and I've replaced those with brand new electrolytics capacitors and the reason I did that was because these things they're what 38 years old they're leaky uh, very seldom do you see a good one I know this guy back here in the corner that's uh, actually this one here's the one I took out 
they fail all the time and they don't have to fail completely they just get leaky and they get leaky and then that puts a positive voltage on the grid of this audio tube here then it runs really hot and it cooks everything around it and uh, things start going bad so you want to change those out no matter what with the SB110 so I got everything back together I've got the dial looking really good and everything so now all I have to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to calibrate everything according to the manual tune it up according to the manual and I'm going to do the neutralization I'm going to make another final segment uh, maybe segment six and show how to do the neutralization the way I do it which is different from the manual and I think a whole lot better so that's it guys looks like we're on the home stretch here uh, this is uh, and good luck with your uh, boat anchor projects remember the information that I give you here is applicable to all types of boat anchors not just to heath kits so uh, anyhow uh, good luck on your boat anchor projects and good DX guys